and welcome to Erica's Girly World Math School. No, I'm not going to do any of this annoying ass stuff. I'm just kidding you guys. But welcome back to the channel. I have an awesome video for you today that I have been working on for a while. So first of all, if you have not subscribed, make sure you do. If you like fashion, if you want shopping tips, if you want travel shopping vlogs, if you like to shop in high-end stores with me, I have all of that for you and so much more. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, Erica's Girly World, make sure you do so. I post all of my looks there, my wish list. You can see my stories, all of my adventures as I travel and shop around the world. So I hope to see you there. So today I finally got around to doing all of the calculations for you guys when it comes to shopping abroad. So see, there are advantages to following a YouTuber that is a fashionista and a geek at the same time. Because... I can do all of the math for you, see? I aim to please, guys. That's what I do. So anyway, and before I get to the meat of the video, I have another Q&A coming up for you guys this Saturday, October 28th at 12 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. So I hope you join me there so we can chat. I have a lot of things to talk to you guys about. I want to show you my wish list for Paris. I have so many things that I want to buy there, guys. But obviously, my budget will not accommodate everything that I want. So I kind of wanted to share with you the items that are on my wish list kind of get your opinions hear from you what type of videos you're looking for you know with the holidays coming up do you want gift ideas do you want deals for the holidays like i'm really looking forward to really chatting and connecting with you guys so i really hope i see you there on my first q a last month you were not able to join with a cell phone because the website was brand new and they were still working on the programming well now the cell phone feature is up so you can join me on the live q a using your computer computer or your cell phone so I'm very excited I hope to see you there so now let's get to the actual video which is shopping abroad well there are many questions out there in terms of what is the best country for you to shop for luxury items for handbags where can you get the best deals what is the best brand to shop for when you travel should you prioritize Chanel should you prioritize Hermes you know there are differences amongst the brands so I did all of the math for you so I'm not just gonna tell you what to do I am gonna show you proof guys I have receipts because I really did all the calculations for you. So you're going to walk out of this video knowing for a fact, I got the facts for you of where you want to shop. So a couple of things I want to talk about. So I cover several countries. There are some areas I did not focus on guys. So for example, Asia, I did not include Asia in any of my calculations because Asia is expensive as hell. It's not even worth me wasting my time. If you live in Asia, man, you buy your plane ticket right now and you go shop anywhere else in the world is going to be cheaper than Asia. But if you live in Asia, still stick around because I'm going to show you all of the prices for all the other countries in the world. So you can see where is the best deal for you to get. I am including obviously the United States I'm comparing all of the prices with United States prices because you know that's where I'm at right so but if you don't live in the US you're still gonna get a lot of valuable information and you're still gonna walk out of this video knowing where is the best country for you to shop for your luxury items I also talk about Canada is Canada better to shop than the US because you know the Canadian dollar has devalued lately same thing for London you know we know that the British pound has devalued tremendously after Brexit so a lot of personal shoppers on Instagram are saying well come to UK UK is better than France right now is that really true well we are gonna find out here I also talk about Ireland I talk about France obviously Paris you know and with France and Paris I include Italy and Germany because it's all the European Union all of the prices are the same everything is pretty much the same I wanted to include a South American country for those of you peeps that live that are my Latin Hispanic peeps of course because that's where i come from so i include brazil in my comparisons as well and then i included australia i have a lot of viewers from australia so i wanted to be able to show you some of the prices in comparison for you as well so let me talk a little bit about the selection in each country before i get into the math okay in terms of selection of finding harder items harder to find items more popular items Paris is really the way to go guys like there is nowhere else in the world that I have been in and I have to say I haven't been in Asia in Australia but I have a good idea of how it is what it's like to shop there because I have friends that have been there but 
Paris is second to none. If you want variety, if you want to find a lot of stuff, if you want the latest collections, your best chance to score them is in Paris because in Paris you have a Chanel in every corner, you have 15 different Louis Vuitton boutiques, you have a bunch of Hermes. So, you know, selection wise, Paris is the place to go. Places like Germany, Italy, Spain, very small selection. Typically, these countries, you know, if you go to the main cities, what you're going to have is a main strip where you're going to have one of each boutique on that main strip and they'll have a pretty decent selection but not everything that you can think of like it is in Paris. Canada it's kind of the same thing is limited if you go to like Toronto for example they have the main strip they don't even have one of each of the big boutiques there was no Chanel boutique I would have to go to the Chanel inside their big department store so the selection is more limited here in the US in my opinion New York and LA are the places to shop if you're looking for variety but still does not compare to France. Brazil if you go to the big cities in Brazil, Sao Paulo and Rio, you will find specific places where you will have the fancy shops. They will have a pretty decent selection, but that is it. You're going to have one or two of each of the big boutiques. I wanted to include Ireland in my video for a specific reason, but Ireland is very, very limited with selection, guys. Ireland has only a big fancy department store called Brown Thomas and Brown Thomas inside the store they have the boutiques so they have a little Chanel boutique inside they have a little Louis Vuitton boutique inside the selection is extremely limited London you have a pretty decent selection but nothing compared to Paris right Here's the scoop with London. You can go to Bond Street, where is the biggest trip to find all of the standalone boutiques. So big Chanel, big Louis Vuitton. And the boutiques on Bond Street, I found out, are some of the biggest in the world. So the biggest Chanel boutique in the world is in Bond Street. The Dior is huge. The Louis Vuitton is huge. And then you have Harrods. I am not a big fan of Harrods. I mean, of course, I love shopping at Harrods. We're talking in terms of selection, okay, guys? because when you go to Harrods you know on the bottom floor when you have where you have all the purses it is a freaking shit show like I'm not even gonna kid you guys it is a mess there's just so many people last time I went there Hermes it looked like you were at the dollar store it was so crowded you couldn't get a sales associate to help you I don't like that like I'm sorry when I'm when I'm doing nice shopping I want the service I want the peace I want the nice you know essay right there at my disposal if I have questions I mean you are paying all of that money not only for the product but you expect a certain level of service so when I go to London, I'm, you know, I only go for Harrods if I go to the ready to wear section, which is on the upper floors and it's way emptier because, you know, a very small percentage of the population can afford clothes from like Dior or Louis Vuitton or Chanel, right? So it's way quieter and then you get better service, but still the selection is not that great. Okay. So in London for me, I like Bond Street, but I could not find any of the hard to get items there. I still think Paris is way, way better in terms of variety selection. So this is the scoop guys now let's talk a little bit about the specifics in terms of sales and taxes and vat and all of the jargon that comes with traveling abroad right so there are certain countries that offer a refund on the sales tax when you buy goods in these countries so what happens is you go to this country you're not a resident from this country so the government understands that it is not fair to charge you tax for that good if you don't live there and you're not going to enjoy the benefits of those sales taxes so what they do is they offer a refund called the VAT in Europe and the way the refund works is when you buy something at a store you fill out a certain form and all the fancy boutiques will fill out the form for you completely all you have to do is sign but the store will fill out the VAT refund form for you with what you bought what the cost was your passport number all of this good stuff you take the good unused okay in 99 percent of the countries the good has to be unused to the airport when you're about to leave the country to go back home you go to the airport there is a customs office there you're gonna take your receipt that you got from the boutique you're gonna show them the good that you bought unused they're gonna stamp your receipt and you're gonna get a refund back for the sales taxes 
typically is around 10 13 percent it varies a little bit depending on the country but it is a major benefit of shopping abroad because not only you see the prices are less expensive right from the currency exchange you also get the benefit of getting some of those sales tax refunded to you which makes the price of the goods even better right so i'm gonna talk a little bit more about the specifics so let's talk per country in the u.s you have the price of a good and on top of that price you are gonna pay a sales tax for most states the sales tax amount varies for all of my calculations i'm gonna use an average sales tax of seven percent which is a pretty good number you know considering the entire country so if you see a, a bag at a store in the u.s and the price is a thousand dollars you know that when you get to the register to pay for that bag you're gonna pay a thousand dollars plus seven percent sales tax when you leave the country you do not get any of that refunded back too bad for you tough shit the government doesn't care so you don't get any of that money back in canada same situation you see one price but then when you pay you have another amount added to the price which is a 13 percent sales tax in canada does not offer any refunds either in brazil the sales tax are already built in into the price of the goods so if you see an amount that's exactly what you're gonna pay at the end of the day and you do not get any refunds back and one benefit that brazilians do have is that luxury stores in brazil they sell things in payment so you can go to gucci and buy a bag and pay for that bag in six equal payments but you have to have a local credit card so i know a lot of people that either know people from brazil or have family in brazil that they will get a credit card uh, under their name that they can use for shopping and they can divide the amount in payments and the payments can go as much as 12 payments guys depending on the amount Ireland does not have a sales tax on top of the price and Ireland offers 13 percent back from the VAT when you go to the airport UK also does not have any additional sales tax on top of the price that you already see and you also get a refund which is about 10 percent of the price that you paid for France Germany Italy none of them have additional sales taxes so again the price that you see at the store is what you're gonna pay at the register and at the airport you're gonna get about 10 percent back refund when you leave the country as well Australia also also offers a refund which is also 10% they do not have additional sales taxes so the price that you see is what you pay as well one thing I want to mention guys is import duties I am not gonna get into import duties in this video but I have to mention because that is the legal thing to do every country has a certain amount that you can bring back with you so in the US I am a US citizen when I travel abroad I can bring $800 worth of goods back to my country anything above that amount I have to pay import duties and you in your respective countries are going to have the same rules probably for different amounts in the u.s i claimed my birkin okay so when i brought my birkin the way you claim something is at the airport you fill out a form you say what you purchase outside of the u.s how much it costs and then you give it to the official and they will make you pay import duties if you went above the 800 dollars that you are allowed for handbags it ends up being about another 10 percent on top of the price that's what you're gonna pay in import duties so the right thing the legal thing to do is to declare just know that but I'm not gonna talk about that in any of my calculations because that depends on wherever you live in the rules are different okay so with that being said how did I go about doing my calculations I chose three big fashion houses which I think are the most popular ones Louis Vuitton Chanel and Hermes and from each of these fashion houses I picked two items to price one there was something that is less expensive a lower price point and one that is a higher price point and i did that guys because you will see that the savings will change depending on the price of the item that you buy very expensive items have a certain amount of savings cheaper items have a different amount of savings so for louis vuitton i picked the speedy which is a lower price point more common item and i picked the louis vuitton twist bag because it's a higher end item costs three four times more than a speedy for Chanel I picked Chanel flap in a jumbo size and I picked a Chanel walk which is a less expensive item and for Hermes I picked a Birkin 35 and I picked the Evelyn 29 which is one of the lowest price point bags that Hermes offered so I picked these six bags and I priced them in all of the countries that I talked to you about and I did all the calculations with sales tax added with the VAT refund and I calculated the bottom line price so you can see what's the best deal here's the spreadsheet 
sheet that I created and I know that there is an IFU. So guys, don't worry about understanding this crazy amount of calculation, but I wanted you to see that I was diligent about getting to the bottom line of this. And I'm gonna show you just one example for one country so you see how the calculation went down. For example, as you see here at the top, you have the price in US dollars, which is the price of the bag at the store. Then the second row that you see is actually the price with sales tax, which was the 7% that I talked to you guys about. So bottom line, this is what you're gonna pay for a Speedy in the US. The next country below is Brazil. So you're gonna see that in Brazil, I put the price of the Speedy in Brazilian reais, which is the currency in Brazil. I then converted that into dollars so we can compare everything in dollars. Once I convert it into dollars, I then, if the country has any type of sales tax on top of the regular price, I added that sales tax. And if the country offers you a refund, you know, when you go to the airport, I subtracted the amount that the refund was so you can get the bottom line price of that speedy. So as you can see here, I did this for Brazil, I did this for Ireland, Canada, everything else. Now that I told you the scoop on everything, let's jump into the conclusions so I tell you what I found out. All right, guys, so I have my computer in my hand so I can actually see all of the data as I'm talking to you guys because, I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not that smart i cannot like memorize everything let's talk about the speedy 30 a speedy 30 in the u.s is going to cost you 970 dollars at the store once you add the sales tax of seven percent the price is 1038 so everything i compare to this 1038 price okay so if you look at the speedy in brazil it's going to cost you 1250 dollars you don't get any money back. So the bottom line price in Brazil is $12.50. If you go to Australia, the price is gonna be $1,055. Once you get your VAT return, then the bottom line price that you're gonna pay is $949. Going down to Ireland, you're gonna see that the price is in Euro 760, in dollars is $894. After you get your VAT return, the price of the Speedy is $778. UK, your price is gonna be $823. And in France, the bottom line price is gonna be 805 so you can see that i did this for every single one of the countries and i'm gonna show you now my final spreadsheet which is the bottom line that i found out in terms of prices and what is worth for you so if you look at this spreadsheet that i'm showing you on the screen right now I sorted the spreadsheet from the most expensive to the least expensive. So at the very top, you're gonna see that the most expensive prices are in Brazil. So if you look at the LV Twist in Brazil, it's gonna cost $45.68. Then the next cheapest one is Canada, $42.60, and then the USA, and then after that, Australia. So right here you see that it is not worth you buying louis vuitton in canada because both the speedy and the twist are actually more expensive in canada than they are in the us so right here one myth debunked australia the lv twist is 34.80 so better than the us and you're gonna save 746 dollars buying it in australia if you buy it in the UK, the price of your twist is going to be $3,067, so you're going to save $1,159. If you buy it in France, you're going to pay $29.44 for your twist, and you're going to save $12.83. And the best deal of them all is in Ireland, and that's why I wanted to include Ireland, because I knew that the 13% VAT return in Ireland was going to make it the best deal. So in Ireland, you can buy an LV twist for $28.45, and it's going to save you almost $1,400, right? Now, and a Speedy is a pretty common item. I'm pretty sure you can find this in Ireland, no problem. As you can see here, guys, the best, best deals for you to buy stuff are in Ireland and in France, Italy, Germany. So the, you know, the common European Union countries. When you look at the countries that you are saving money, if you look at Louis Vuitton, the average savings for your Speedy is going to be $200. Now, if you look at the average savings for your Louis Vuitton twist, it's gonna be $1,142. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the more expensive the item you buy, the more savings you're gonna get. So the best thing to do is, if you are contemplating, let's say if you go to Paris and you're like, ah, should I buy two wallets or buy a bag? Buy the bag, because the bag, the most expensive item, is gonna have much, much bigger savings than something that is less expensive. So moving on in the line, let's go to Chanel. Talking about the Chanel Classic Flap Jumbo Size. 
in Brazil and Canada, again, you're going to pay more than in the U.S., so do not buy there, okay? Now, looking at the cheaper countries, Australia, that's going to cost you $53.30, and you're going to save $555 compared to the U.S. In the U.K., you're going to save $615.00. In France, Italy, and Germany, the price of your flap is going to be $52.84, and you're going to save $600. And in Ireland, the price of your flap is going to be $5,107, which is going to end up being a savings of $778 for you. The best deals, as you can tell, are UK, France, and Ireland. If you look at the difference in price between the UK and France, it's not a lot, guys. So... You know, people are saying, oh, come to the UK is the absolute best deal, like all the personal shoppers are saying right now on Instagram. But the difference is very small. So for a Chanel flap, you're going to save $601 in France and you're going to save $615 in the UK. So really just $14 difference. I mean, so it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter where you buy. They're both equally great. Now, let's look at the Chanel walk. Chanel walk in Brazil is going to be $3,000 in canada 2332 in the us it costs 200 2247 now let's look at the countries that are cheaper in australia you're gonna save 292 dollars buying your walk and you're gonna pay 1955 in the uk 1930 in france 1975 in ireland again is the cheapest of them all you're gonna pay 1909 and you're gonna save $338. Last, let's talk about Hermes. Hermes Birkin in Brazil, almost $17,000, guys. In Now, here is one thing that changes with Canada. Canada, when we compare with the United States, for Louis Vuitton and Chanel, Canada is more expensive. But for Hermes, Canada is cheaper. So for the peeps that live in the U.S., if you want to take a little trip to Canada to do a little Hermes shopping, it is worth it. So for a Birkin 35 in Canada, you're going to pay $11,210. Your savings compared to the U.S. is going to be $1,500. Uh, if you go to Australia, your Birkin is going to be a little over $10,000. You're going to save $2,200 compared to the U.S. U.K., your Birkin is going to be $8,408. Now we're talking about some serious savings, guys. Over $4,000 in savings if you buy your Birkin in the UK. And the same is true for France, Italy, and Germany. Price of your Birkin 35, $84.71. You're going to save $4,200. And if you buy it in Ireland, biggest savings of them all, you're going to save $4,500. But here's a disclaimer. I doubt you ever score a Birkin 35 in Ireland right off the street. The Hermes boutique there is very, very small. I'm sure you got to have some serious connections and you have to live there in order to score one. So don't book your ticket to Ireland yet to buy your Birkin. But if you want to buy other Hermes items in Ireland, like shoes, bracelets, scarves, absolutely, totally worth it. And then looking at the Hermes Evelyn 29, kind of the same deal, guys. In Brazil, it's super expensive, six grand. In Canada, it's about the same price as the US, okay? Australia is a little cheaper than the US, and the best deals are in the UK, France, and Ireland. So in general, guys, again, the savings rules apply here. Look at the average savings you get buying a Birkin abroad, on the cheaper countries, you're gonna get an average savings of $3,800, $4,700. If you buy the Evelyn, you're gonna get an average savings of $1,040. So the more expensive item definitely saves you a lot more money. Let's look here, what are the best brands for you to buy abroad? So if you look at Louis Vuitton, you are saving, for the cheap items, you're saving 19.2%. If you go to the expensive items, you're saving 27% okay for Louis Vuitton if you go to buy Chanel abroad for the expensive item the Chanel flap you're gonna save an average of 10% and for the Chanel walk you're gonna save an average of 13% so if you compare Chanel to Louis Vuitton the savings at Louis Vuitton are way bigger so if you have items on your wish list let's say you have a bag from Louis and a bag of Chanel from Chanel that you really want and you're traveling to Paris and you're thinking which one should I get definitely go for the Louis because the Louis is way cheaper in Europe than the Chanel is. And looking at Hermes, Hermes savings, okay, for the cheaper price and for the expensive price for both the Birkin and the Evelyn are around 30% 
cheaper. So putting into perspective, Hermes is absolutely the best deal for you to buy abroad. So recapping for you guys, cheapest one of them all, Hermes, about 30% cheaper. Second cheapest of them all, Louis Vuitton, which is about 22% cheaper. Mm, the least of them all is Chanel, which is only about 10% cheaper. So when you travel, don't prioritize Chanel. Get these other brands that are much better deal abroad. So now that we looked at all of the math in detail, I wanted to do a recap of everything that I found. Countries that are generally not good. South America, very expensive. Asia, very expensive. Canada, it's typically more expensive as well, unless you're buying a Birkin in Canada. Anything else is really not worth it, guys. Great countries for you to buy. UK, France, and Ireland. All awesome, awesome deals. Australia is a little bit cheaper than the US, but doesn't really justify a trip just for you to go shopping. So really your best deals are UK, France, Italy, Germany, and Ireland, with Ireland being the cheapest one of them all, but Ireland does not have a great selection. Now, which one is better, UK or France? I would say UK and France, Paris, you know, are still quite comparable, not by much, okay? In some cases, you're gonna save 10 bucks more, 30 bucks more, 50 bucks more, not really significant when you're buying a luxury item. Which brand is the best brand for you to buy abroad? Hermes, hands down. Hermes gives you the most amount of savings, about 30% in savings when you buy Hermes in Europe. So if you have things on your list, prioritize your Hermes because that's the biggest bang for your buck. The second best option, Louis Vuitton. Still offers great, great savings for you guys, about 20 to 23% in terms of savings. So definitely worth it. Chanel, bottom of the priority list, guys. Only about a 10% savings. I don't really think it's that worth it. I would totally focus on spending my money on Hermes and Louis Vuitton because I'm getting way more bang for my buck and then hold off on your Chanel and make sure you buy them here in the US. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope you're leaving the video with a real good idea on where is the best deal to buy. And in some cases, guys, if you are looking to buy a really expensive bag, the savings are so big for like a Birkin, for example, that you can book your trip to Paris is pay for your hotel, buy the bag, and still save a crap load of money. So there you have it, guys. This is my handbag math. I hope you enjoyed Erica's Girly World math. No, handbag math class. Did I say that right? I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that surprised you here. Are you shocked about any of the things that I talked about? Did you know everything that I already talked about? Had you seen before any type of math related to handbags like this? I hope this was helpful and I hope you have lots of fun and lots of savings buying luxury on your next trip. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.